Revelations 2 and 29. He that hath an ear. Let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. The NIV articulates it this way. Whoever has ears, look around. Anybody here not have any? Let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. The ability to listen and hear spiritually. You see, being able to hear the rumblings and know what to do financially or economically or all the other avenues of life will only be good for a season. But it is imperative if you're going to make eternity in heaven that you hear what the Spirit is saying. Lord, we thank you for your word tonight. We thank you for the hearers that will be listening. I pray and ask implore you for your unction, for your help today as I speak to your beloved. Grant us not only the ability to hear, but to discern, to receive, and allow it to be planted in the fertile soil of our souls that we will have a relationship daily of walking with you. And everybody said in Jesus' name. God bless you. You could be seated. Paul writing to the Galatians. This I say then. It's an admonishment. It's an encouragement. It's advice. Walk in the spirit. Easier said than done. Because a lot of times I think my spirit's the Holy Spirit. Not the Holy Spirit, but my holiness and my spirit and my Christianity and my opinion trumps God's. Let me tell you something, ain't nobody in, excuse me, there isn't anybody here that doesn't struggle with the arrogance and the ego of your flesh. Otherwise, what I'm reading wouldn't need to be in the word. So you, if you're listening to the Spirit, you won't be fulfilling all the needs of the flesh. Why is that so important? It's, it's okay to have stuff. It's okay to have things. Well, listen. What you feed is what's strongest. Because the flesh, or for the flesh, lusteth against the Spirit. <laughs> it's an old statement that I've yet to see be true. They're so spiritually minded, they're no earthly good. Please show me somebody like that. No, I can't do it. But I can tell you some people that are so fleshly minded, they're no spiritual good. And they'll tout their opinion, and they'll tout their spirit, and they think it trumps the word of God. I know one of them guys. He's me. That's why Paul said, and I died daily. When's the last time you died? When's the last time you died and allowed God to lead you in the spirit to where he governed where you went, what you did? He governed your mouth, governed your attitude. You ever get a... Everybody honest enough, you get up with a bad attitude and you say, hold on, man, let me go fix this. When's the last time you allowed God to fix that? <laughs> Hello? Can, can, we, can we be honest this morning? <sighs> it's, it's serious. And I'm, I'm going somewhere today. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary. Can I tell you something? 
you're really not going to find balance because you're not supposed to. You're supposed to be out of balance. You're supposed to be more spiritual than carnal. However, that is our battle, isn't it? Because it lets us know that you cannot do the things that you would spiritually. A lot of times, we'll just blow it off, well, that's not for me. It's funny, we, we don't say that about the things of the world. We don't say that about the things of business. We'll still fight to get it, but the enemy, the world, our flesh convinces us that it's just okay to come and sit in this seat and check off the obligation. I showed up today. Anybody ever work with someone like that? They showed up, but I don't know that they contributed anything. Are you hearing from the Spirit of God? Are you walking in the presence of God? Or are you listening to the world and walking in worldliness? You see, it matters what goes in. It matters who you allow to speak in your life. You see, the Bible says in the last days, they're gonna, when people are going to want, tell me something that sounds good. When's the last time you allowed yourself to be called out and let know? And you know what? What you said and what you did and how you're acting and things you're doing are wrong. I, uh, I saw a heartbreaking, somewhat heartbreaking video this week. A nice lady was standing there just despondent. And whoever was filming walked up and you could hear them laughing. And the nozzle of the fuel pump was in her car. And then they panned over to the pump. She had filled her car, her gas gasoline running car with diesel. You could see the, the distraughtness on her face. You could hear the people laughing. And bless her heart, I, I, I'm not trying to diminish the moment, but if I could, man, I would love to have stepped right through that screen with a big bucket And just a piece of hose. Because she had just poured a whole bunch of stuff into her car, like many people do their lives, stuff she didn't need. How many of us fill our lives? And I mean, you're full and you're, you're proud that you're full and you're glad that you got it all, but you don't realize you filled your life with stuff and it just ain't gonna run well. God wants to step in, just like I would, man, I would have loved to have walked up there. It's if that's a mistake, but mistakes can be fixed. And shove that tube down there and get that mouth full of diesel as I cause that siphon to happen and suck all that diesel out of there. And then I would, I would pay to put gasoline in her car. And if, if you and I, because I know every, every man in this building would do the same. We got a heavenly father that recognizes that in all, if we'll be honest, that we filled our life with junk, and you got it, you, 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 you're proud of it, you're flesh it. Well, every now and then, when our feet hit the turmoil, what am I going to do with all this? I, it's just not running good. Amen? The Bible tells us in Ephesians, because you have to understand, our fuel tank is our heart and our mind. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Let me tell you something. I've said this before and I'll say it again. One of the most, the most dangerous to place to be is deceived. Because you don't know that you are. And I find as a pastor, there's just sometimes I can't help them. God, this one's in your hands. Be renewed in the spirit. When's the last time you renewed the spirit of your mind and got down and just allowed the Holy Ghost to flow through you to where he could just clean out all that diesel and clean out all that stuff that doesn't help you run and it's hindering you and you're, either you're bitter or you get upset or you're always on edge. Or you can't, can we be honest here today?
and put on the new man or person, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. True holiness is of God. Now, we all have our form, but I don't care how long your sleeves are if you're bitter. I don't care how uncut, shaved, or cut, whatever. If you're not involved, if you're not prayed through, I don't care if you, if you take up the cheapest corner on the street. If you're dead spiritually, it doesn't matter. Because it is the spirit that quickens it. John 6 and 63. Jesus was dealing with a very important situation where people will actually stop following him. The spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. God ain't going to write your resume of how much you made or what you've done or what you think you've done. In fact, you'll only be surprised how much dross that really is. Now, don't sit around and put your family through hell trying to get into heaven by not doing anything, man. Roll up your sleeves, go to work and provide. I get all that. But don't forget that uh, it's not about how much you get. It's about can you get them to heaven. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak, Jesus, the words that I speak, the spirit, they are spirit. And they are life. Are you hearing and following after what Jesus is speaking? And in a world where we got so much upheaval with all the voices of, of political propaganda and this is right and that's right. Let me tell you something. You better be able to know what thus saith the Lord and what is not. It is that simple. And I don't care how long you've been around the church. I don't care if you've been a preacher. And I don't care if you think you're going to to the bar. You better hear what God's saying today. Because if he can't correct you today, you'll be lost tomorrow. We better get a hold of this thing called the Holy Ghost. Because it's going to lead and guide you into all truth. And in order to do that, he's got to lead you out of your opinions and out of your ideas. Jeez, listen. Listen, this, this is not an admonishment of punishment. It's an understanding of power. Because we need powerful people, not pitiful people. We didn't know half of half of costals. He said in Luke, Behold, pay attention. I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over some of the power of the enemy. Absolutely not what it says. Can someone correct me today? Sister Crystal, I can't hear you. Anybody y'all be here in the cheap seats? Everybody. You got something going on in your life. I'm telling you, God will give you the power to defeat it. I'm telling you, over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Hold on, hold on. I, I, hold, now I, but I got a pastor for a minute. I got who? So why aren't you powerful? Well, he meant that for you, Brother Crow, but he didn't mean that for me. He only meant that for Brother Joe. He didn't mean that for me. He only meant that for Brother Terry and Sister Angel. But the rest of y'all, now you just need to struggle and be failures. And... You are as spiritual as you want to be. And so while Paul's speaking to the Ephesians, man, I haven't even got to my message yet, so y'all just need to bear with me. This I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord, 
that ye henceforth walk not as other Gentiles walk, in the vanity of their mind. If it's vanity, spirituality, as you grow, will start wanting to diminish that stuff. Hear what I'm saying? He who dies with the most toys is probably going to go to hell. Having the understanding darkened. With all you're getting, get understanding, get wisdom, get, get understand that the world has got us. We got to go to Starbucks. We got to go to Dunkin' Donuts. We got to go to the mall. We got to get a new car. We got to get, we got to get, we got to get, we got to get, we got. Let me ask you, when's the last time you got up on a Sunday morning to get to church? I got to get full of spirit. Listen, I get it. It comes with my job, but every one of you can critique me. And they're right, Sister Tia. Well, you do in your mind, man. I wish you'd have said this. I wish they'd have sang that. I wish they'd have done this. Oh, they should have done that over there, and they should have done it. I wonder what would really happen if I took their liberty and spoke to them or you with all your opinions with what I know. <laughs> Having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that's in them. The Bible also talks about willingly ignorant. Look, I've, I've done it. Let me confess my sins here. There's a few times at home that I've said it a thousand times. I don't know. I'm going to walk around that bad boy. I've just asked for that not to be that way. I know y'all don't do that. I know I should just, just nope. In fact, I want to make sure they think that I never saw that. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You just. You don't want to do what you know you should do. The scary part is when you lose that and you've bought into your own justification of not doing it. I ain't got to show up on time for prayer. It don't matter. And you start this whole thing and you're going down. The enemy's just, oh, yeah. yeah I, if you want to matter, then do something that matters. Yeah. Don't talk yourself out of it. Okay, let me get to my father here. No, let me let me finish this verse. Being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that's in them. So you'll be as spiritual as you want to be. And if you're not spiritual, you did it to yourself. Because of the blindness of their heart. Who being past feeling, I mean they don't have feel. It's not saying they don't have feelings. It probably means they have too many feelings. Hurt their feelings every time you do anything around here. Having given themselves over unto lasciviousness and to work all uncleanness with greediness. But you have not so learned Christ. There's a way to conduct ourselves, there's a way to act. Okay? There's a way to receive what God has for you. Now let's get to the fun part. Mark chapter 5. As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, This is Jairus. Be not afraid, only believe. Look, my daughter's dying. You tell me to be not afraid, only believe? I got trouble at the house. I got death in my house. I got, I got, I got sickness in my house. I got problems at home. Anybody got problems at home? What, you're telling me to not be afraid and only believe? Let's get into this. And he suffered no man to follow him, save Peter and James and John, the brother of James. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and seeth the tumult, and them that wept and wailed greatly. And when he was come in, he saith unto them, Why make ye this ado and weep? How many of us were in the presence of God, have access to the power of God, but our focus is everything that's wrong instead of the one that can make it all right? We come in here, instead of worshiping, we worry. Instead of praise, we panic. We sit unmoved and untouched while the presence of God is moving and we're sitting. You have to understand the access to that is worship and praise. 
If you're, some say, well, I don't move that way. I promise you that at 3 o'clock in the morning, if I came and engulfed your house in flames, you could run. You could move. You could stand. You could shout. I promise you if your best friend just invited you out to eat and you was talking, you could go. It's all about what motivates you. Well, see, we live in opulent America. Some of us were moved. We've been there, done that, got the T-shirt. But we no longer hear from the Spirit of God. So he's got Jesus in his home. Are you hearing me? He said, why make this a doing week? The damage is not dead but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. Anybody ever heard? Well, it's too late. It's too late, Brother Larry. It's too late, Carla. They're just too far gone. They're beyond help. You stand in there in the presence of God with a mentality that even God can't fix this. It matters who you're listening to. Hey, house leaders, it matters what you're saying. It matters what you're causing the family around you to hear. It may not be sin and salvation, but maybe killing your witness with your own spouse, with your own children. Hear what I'm saying. But when he had put them all out, what? Did Jesus just cause a little division? Did he just pick and choose? What, not everybody got a trophy? Not everybody got invited to the leadership meeting? Not everybody got invited on a platform to sing? You see, you have to understand, you got to have the right mentality. you got to have the right attitude. And you got to be doing something that singles you out to come with me. He allowed a couple of disciples to come, but he kicked out the weepers and the mourners who were convinced it's dead. It's a give me around people that no matter how bad it looks, no matter how ugly, we're going to have revival in our homes. We're going to have revival. Hey, look, let the dead bury the dead. I'm ready for revival. I'm ready for God to be allowed to do what God can do. I'm ready for real, true, Holy Ghost, apostolic people. To step up, shun the world, and seek God. I'm ready to see it happen. I'm ready to allow Jesus to walk in. Walk in and up and down. Put out those that are pretending. Let's get rid of those that are playing. And let's find those seeking the face of God. I don't care what problems you got if you're seeking him. I don't care what issues you bring in here if you're seeking him. I don't care what kind of pr trouble you bring in here if you see it, because I know he can fix it. The problem with those people that are broke, messed up in the head, and don't want him. Oh, you hear what I'm saying? Can you imagine that little girl in that car? Fuel, fuel, let's go. Fire that bad boy. I, I hate to, I shudder to find out what would happen. You let me know if you want to find out, we'll take your car and we'll do it. Your car. And when you put him out, he took the father and the mother. Listen, it's still important for the head of the house thinks, speaks, and believes. Nobody's grandfathered in the church. You better be hearing from the Spirit. Or sit down. Listen, if he brought the father and mother of the damsel and them that were with him. Some good old Holy Ghost filled disciples believing. Took her in there where the damsel was lying. And he took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, Talitha Kumai, which is being Interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was of the age of, of 12 years of age. And they were astonished with a great astonishment. And he charged them straightly that no man that should know it and commanded that something should be given her to eat. Can I, can I just throw a pastoral commercial in here? One of the hardest things as a pastor, because trust me, most of the time, 
You, you think pastors just have to get you. you. You've missed it. One of the hardest things is wanting better for people than that what they want for themselves. Does that make, does that make sense? And knowing that the access is there, if you would just give yourself to it. If you've ever given yourself to anything for any length of time, you've learned that it'll produce. Some of us has produced in spades things that will mean nothing when you stand before God and omitted pursuing God. Can you imagine what it was like for Jairus to make the decision to go to Jesus? Let's get to this for a minute. This is a man of the synagogue. Jesus is the one that braided a whip. and Jesus is the one. He called these people vipers and snakes, and he was not easy on people. Now, I understand today we're not allowed to say anything that might hurt somebody's feelings. Well, God wasn't trying to hurt anybody's feelings. He's trying to save souls. If you, if you let me, you know what? How many of you young people go to school? How many's ever gone to school? You know why you went to school? To learn how to do things right. To learn to educate yourself. You, 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 you were educated, but you were taught how to learn. Hopefully you weren't taught what to think. You were taught how to learn. Sadly, they want to, well. Come on, Pastor. So give me a minute while I try to put a little dial internal dialogue to this gentleman who's he's religiously astute. He's got an image and a reputation. He's financially well off. And he's standing there in his home with a persuasion and a mentality that's dignified. And he's in his house and it's silent. The hushed whispers of the family and friends could be heard over in the main room. He knew what was being said. He could already hear the shuffling feet of the mourners outside his house. His well-read and studied mind raced for answers to the ache that was in his broken heart. He searched his memory for any kind of answer. And I can imagine as his frustration grew, his body stiffened and a collision of understanding was going on in his head and his heart. I'm a respected man. God, and I'm religious, and I've attained success, and I'm a respected elder. Uh, you can imagine as his thoughts appeared upon his expression and his face grew grim. I'm a pillar here and in the community. His years of strict adherence to his beliefs were at a full-fledged war now wrestling against the recent news of current events. Everything he'd worked so hard to be, to become. All the people that patted him on the back and told him how great he was and the respect that his name carried. All the elders entrusted in him and would go to him and go silent like E.F. Hutton was speaking as he talked. His name was synonymous with respect and reverence among his peers. They admired his years of unwavering strength, stalwart, strong leadership. The struggle he could not break protocol. I've never done something like that. Oh, the wrestling, the fight, the war. If I broke from everything I'd been, it would be disastrous for my reputation and my name. I might be stripped of my robes of honor and I might lose my seat in the synagogue and they may not speak so highly of me anymore. 
it would be social suicide. And this internal monologue was ripping and tearing at his inside. That high prestige would plummet to the ground. He'd lose everything that he'd built. I can't waver. I can't do it. It's an unthinkable choice. My traditions and my opinions demand it. My, my robes and who I am declare it. And my status screams, you can't do it. But that inner turmoil, crushing the emotions and the, the, the love for his daughter started to finally break away at his pride and his ego. Desire for his little girl ignited on his only hope. His inner broken voice interrupted the, the silence. And a faint whisper broke from his lips. He's like, That's my little ray of sunshine. She's the very source of the laughter in my own. That's my little girl. His mind flooded and raced with memories. The brightness of the daily routine. All excited, she greeted him when she would come home from his time at the synagogue. The dainty little feet pitter pattering across the floor. His hand clutching hers and her other hand holding flowers or something to show him. And he'd pick her up into his arms. Her long, flowing, raven hair, and that shrill giggle placed her, placed her on his shoulders. Oh, she could light up a room. This whole world, and without fail, she always seemed to restore the joy after a long, hard day. And all of a sudden, the Dark reality forced its way back into his mind. And he returned back to the dark room with the still body of his daughter before him. Again, the darkness chasing away the precious moments of a better time. She lay still and moving. And the room just seemed to grow thick with darkness. Suddenly his voice cracked. I can't let this be. He looked down again at his daughter. Wiped the sweat from his brow. Shook his head no. And then whispered it no. He turned quickly and stepped out of the room, into the main room, full of people. And as he surveyed the room, his eyes met everyone with a gaze that pierced everyone in the room. They waited to see what he would say or what he would do. And suddenly his vo voice broke that awkward, dark silence where nobody knows what to say. And he said, no. It cannot end this way. His heart reached up into his head, swept aside the years of ego pride and stalwart religious ceremonies and sickness. And with a new hope, he reached out his grizzled hand and touched the side of his wife's face, wiped a tear off, looked deep into her eyes for just a moment in time. And he had said no. And he rushed away out the door. He didn't stop to turn around even though he could hear the clamor in his room. And he said, I'm going to get Jesus. I'm going to get Jesus. This situation is beyond me. This circumstance is out of my hands. There are things I can't do. I'm not as bad to the bone as I think I am. I need to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. 
My family depends upon it. My spouse depends upon it. My church depends upon it. I ain't got time for arrogant egos. I gotta get to Jesus. We read about this religious leader, a ruler he is called. Jarius goes to, he, he doesn't, I just can't imagine if someone got in his way that day. I can't imagine what would have happened if someone tried to, oh, Rabbi, Rabbi, can, not today. Sometimes you got to get serious about your dead spirited situation and finally say to all your junk, to all your stuff, to all your opinions and ideologies that's got you twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Not today. I'm getting a hold of Jesus. This will not continue. This will not go on. My children will be safe. My husband will be safe. My daughter will be. Why do I feel like I'm all by myself in the house of God? There's cancer in here. There's disease in here. There's sickness in here. There's opinions in here. Oh, where are those people today that came to get a hold of Jesus? Is there anyone here? Let me reverse it a little bit. Don't come up to me and say, that was a good little sermon. I'll walk up and say, man, you look dead. You're just going to sit there? Wait a minute. You ain't moved out of that spot since you come to this church. You ain't. I ain't never seen you in the altar. Oh, I've seen you come and try to correct me, but I've never seen you get corrected by God. You see, see, the, the world wants you and the devil wants you. You turn the church into optional. That it's just something else to belong to. But the devil's a liar. This ain't a country club. This ain't a group. This ain't a members only. This is for those that want to get a hold of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Do you notice what happened? Give me a minute. I may need you to put this back on my tie. Because I'm preaching in the jacket. Get it? Did I get it? And I don't need it. Yeah, I do. I don't want it. I got it. Thank you for your effort. I'm not here. And I don't come here day in and day out to wear a suit, to punch a time clock, to be a pastor. Listen, let, you, you, <laughs> let me tell you something. I want to be saved. Some of you get stuck up and hung up on the most ridiculous, stupid stuff. And I ain't never seen you in that altar. I want to see you lay your hands on someone walking in the spirit of God. You got complaint, but you ain't got no compassion. You got the vision, but no desire. It's time that you put that stuff out of your head. Put your ego out of your life. You don't need ego, you need anointing. You don't need to quote another verse of scripture. You need to start living the scripture. As soon, as soon as Jer... Let me show you something. There's a twofold story here. As soon, as soon as Jarius got to Jesus, he got his attention. Hey, we're going. They're going. Was this Asia? Somebody interrupted the process. Well, you don't think Jesus knew? This lady comes up, distracts Jarius, steals his miracle. Well, that's what we think if there's ever a delay. 
There, there's a lady right now that don't come to this church because she's mad at me. Because she wanted to have a, a session with me. And I went, I told my wife, I need you to go talk with this lady. Well, first of all, I'm going to protect my marriage and my family. But I also want to realize you may be talking about something sensitive enough. Hey, that's why, that's why you got the both of us. And let me, let, me, let me just lay this out there. You got a real pastor's wife here. She ain't at home beating on me about not liking the church or this. Part. Man, you ought to hear my house when she praying. You ought to go see all the little notes of her getting through her Bible. You ought to hear her coming with questions and pray. Oh, whoa, 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 wait a minute. That don't mean she's perfect. She irritated me yesterday to no end. But that didn't change who she really is. And maybe God sent that to me. Get over my bad self. The problem with some of you is you don't know how to get over you. You're the, you're the biggest problem in your life. Hey, the devil ain't your problems. It's you. This, you can't walk in the spirit because you can't get through you. You can't get through your opinion. You can't get through your ideas. You can't get through. Yeah, that, 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 that's why you got all this worldly stuff going great. But when it comes to the house of God, you're, you got a goose egg. So Jarius and them are making their way through the, through the problem. And you know what? That little girl comes up and hijacked his miracle. <laughs> you see, she also showed something else. Because the, 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 the disciples are like, what do you mean who's touching you? See, because we look at how everybody's here to touch Jesus, right? Nope. Nope. Some of you are just checking the box. You have all sorts of needs, but you don't want any. Well, wait. Anybody want something from Jesus today? I'll, 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 hey, I'll give you all the time you need right now. I got two, three, four. I am here to step all over your flesh, but I don't want to touch your spirit. I want you to get connected with Jesus today. Because understand, what you hear is what you get. Because if you think I'm being negative, you're missing it. But if you understand you made an invitation to touch Jesus and get your miracle, get your deliverance, make a calling and lecture, it's available to you right now. I ain't messing with that, but I'm messing with your flesh. Okay, let, 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 me, let me break this down in a sentence. She said, wait, you don't understand, fellas, and this is what you need to get because you're fixing to be the church. There's a difference between being touched and touching. Because this one, virtue left. Did you come to get virtue? See, some of you, you think you're so virtuous, you don't need none from God. You're so, you don't need to go ahead and get out beside yourself and lift up your hands and worship with abandon. You don't need to raise your voice. I may hijack the, the, the Sunday night and preach a message I got about that. Some, some, some of y'all think you got Jesus sewed up, and you in a world of hurt. You better pray I preach that message for you silent few that can't get up out of your chair. Listen, let me paraphrase this. Someone in the crowd, someone made a demand of faith and hope on the ability of God. All right. Backtrack to the story I told you. The little girl or the lady that put the diesel in her car was helpless. What's your name? Yeah. Savannah? Beautiful name. Glad you're here. She needed someone right then because she didn't know they would just pull that diesel out of there. 
it looked like a tragedy. It wasn't. The one that knows can fix it. If I could have just stepped through that camera, Andy, I'd have, I'd have been, you know what? Let your heart not be troubled. You believe that's diesel in your car? It is. But believe also in me because I'm fixing to get it out and put in what you need. The question is, are you going to dump out what you don't need and let God pour in what he wants? Are you ready to let him dump out of your mind and out of your heart what you don't need and let him dump in what you... Are you ready to change your stinking thinking for the Spirit of God? Are you ready to put... The car ain't going to run. But if you let someone get the junk out and put the right stuff in, Anybody have that kind of hope today that you got the wrong stuff in and you want to get it out and let God put the... Anybody come with that attitude today? Anybody here with a real need? I, I... anybody here I don't have to finish this if there's just one person here that's tired of the junk in your trunk and you're ready to kill him house and get to God can put in Anybody come to activate the ability of God? Anybody come to activate and, uh, and stimulate and attract the ability of God? He's here. He can heal. He can deliver. He can change your mind. Cleanse you. He can, if, if you'll touch him.